here with Shannon Sizzlin Stampers and today I'm coming to you from my Southern Colorado studio with a fun, very kind of artsy class for my local, uh, one of my local community groups that I do some curbside kits for. So, um, <clears throat> just want to start with a couple of things. If you are interested in ordering from me, my host code, you'll go to sizzlinstamper.stampinup.net and my host code is right here, ZXPX2YF4. February is the perfect month to order if you have anything that you're wanting to restock because it's celebration. So you can earn free stamp sets or free paper with qualifying purchases. If you have any questions, just message me, text or email. My information is all right there. All right, with that said, this kit is probably different. It's a little bit of a mixed, what I call mixed media art. And what that means is your kit comes with supplies to make two different cards that are a little bit, probably maybe something that you might not normally do. One of the cards features gilded leafing and the other card is very much a mixed media collage work of different types of paper products. So let me show you what you're going to get in your kit. You will have one stamp and your stamp is coming, most of them are coming from the Itty Bitty Greetings this time. And you'll have a variety. I don't know what all yours will say, but they're small little phrases. And they're going to come to you uh, because these are red rubber and they're new, you're probably going to put them together. And so I wanted to show you how you do that first of all. And then we'll go through the remainder pieces of your kit. You're just merely going to pull off the little backing of your stamp and then this has the stamp image on it you're going to look for the piece where you can clearly see a line a cut line through your saying you're going to peel those little backs off and now you can see what your stamp says backwards fabulous at any age you're going to lay the back match it up you want it when you lay it right on top fabulous at any age backwards Fabulous at any age backwards. I'm going to lay that directly on top of there and carefully peel it off. And that's all there is to it. So that's how you'll put, if you ever receive a stamp from me that's uh, red rubber not put together, that's how you put it together. Very easy. So you'll have a stamp of some sort that will say, it could say, uh, some of these say, hope you're feeling better. Congratulations. I'm here from you. Ha for you. Have a lucky day. For you. Showered with love. Hey, friend trick-or-treat although I'll try to keep the seriously uh, holiday ones out unless it's a nearby one we have happy Mother's Day Easter blessings many thanks world's best father happy anniversary so you could get a variety there who knows what saying you'll get in your kit this month always a surprise then within your kit you're gonna have a white card base that is whoop, my stamp just stuck right there to it set that aside standard half size white cardstock. You will have some, some form of a floral paper that is a large rectangle, traditional layer one for card bases. All of my florals and patterns this time, because it is a mixed media product class, they're all a varied variety, um, but they will be some sort of artistic style floral papers. Okay. You are going to have a white, this is from our new double oval punch right here. And it has the smaller smooth white and then it has this larger scalloped. I'm doing the larger scallop just in case some of you have a larger sentiment that you'll need. And you'll have a piece of shimmer gold ribbon or some sort of a gold ribbon. The next pieces that you're gonna have for the other card, well, this next item is a three-dimensional card because you're going to see that it's an easel tent card and it will set up. So you're going to have a story label punch, um, which is this punch here, and it may be in a variety of colors. Hopefully as I package them up, I'll try to somewhat color coordinate them. This could be in a pool party, a pink, a yellow, a green, but you'll have a punch. You're going to have some little type of ribbon that you'll make into a bow. They all will be different as well. Be very careful in looking because you're going to have a little thing with three or four pearl, gold pearls on it. And actually, you may use that on both cards. 
Oh, and I forgot with this one, you're going to have a little Ziploc bag. I haven't, I didn't bring it in because it's bagged up and I didn't want to get it out. I'm just using my big container of the gold gilded leafing. Okay. And it is real gold. Um, you will have an acetate circle with a different, they all have different gold metallic prints. You will have some sort of strip of paper, again, a variety. And these are designed to have more of a textile or a texture style, style print to them. You will have something similar, some sort of a background print that is a three and three quarter by three and three quarter square. And then you'll have some little scrap of paper. These are bigger than what you will receive. They're going to be probably half the size or a third of this size. And I have even more varieties in this. I just brought you some to show to show on the video. A varied varieties. Most of these uh, florals that we're going to be using, these prints and papers, were actually painted on canvas and then photographed and then those photographs were then made into 12 by 12 sheets of designer series paper that we're now going to cut apart and use. And then the last piece that you're going to have will be a 12 inch piece of white paper. And we will begin um, with that when you're going to do a little bit of scoring. And then you will probably going to see on the back of your storybook label, it's going to come pre- my goal is to have it come pre-dimensionaled. If not, you're going to get a little pack with a couple of dimensionals in it because you're going to need that for this card, okay? Or tent, if frame gift. So I'm going to set all these away and we aside, and we're going to start with this card actually, or the tent. So the first thing you're going to do is score your. Uh, paper. And again, I said this is 12 inches long by four inches wide. And we want to end up with three panels that are four inches. So you're going to score it at four and at eight. And then that will give you a four inch, four inch, four inch panel. If you do not have a scoring tool or a scoring blade, you can merely take a uh, Measure out where's and make a little pencil mark at four and eight, and then take your ruler and either another ruler, and you just go shank. If you happen to have a bone folder, that works. The back of a pair of scissors will work. Worst case scenario, make a mark and fold it by hand as best as you can. All right, so now you have you folded those scoring up really well. And this is what we're going for. We want it to have this tent-like image. For right now, we're going to start by decorating panel one. That's going to face the front, and it's on the end. So to do this, get all your little goodies that you need for this card. And we are going to merely glue. Some of these are may require uh, you holding time to hold your glue on a little bit longer, or if you have a specialty adhesive like glue dots, tear tape, um, etc., double-sided tape, you may want to get that out for this project. But for step one, we're merely gluing this texturized square of paper into the center of that first panel. Okay. The next step is your little strip of paper. You're going to want, or I do, you can either do a pennant end, you can just do a slash cut on one end or both ends, uh, whatever you want. If you want a pennant, whatever. And you're going to glue that down in about mm, a little bit lower than the center of your card. A little bit lower than the center of that panel. So we've just glued that on, right? Like so. The next step is to adhese the acetate circle. And for that, I'm going to use my glue dots. You could use double-sided tape. You can use the white glue. It will take it a little bit of a little bit of time to actually adhere and glue. The trick for this is to put all your adhesive onto one to one side because we're going to be covering up one side. And because it is so see-through, you don't want to see your adhesive through there. In 
and you want to make sure to put plenty of adhesive on this because it is a uh, good sized circle. And then you're going to just plunk that right down centered high on the strip. Okay, so centered high. All right. The next step is whatever your flower piece of, of paper looks like, you're going to hand cut some flowers out. And this is where you're going to have to use your creativity and create that however you want. If you happen to have dimensionals on your own, you can use them at this point. Otherwise, your white glue or glue dots work really well because you're going to be gluing a lot of it onto this, um, or a little bit at least, onto that adhesive. So let me just show you. For mine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my long stem. I just previously cut it just to save a little bit of time on the video. And I'm just sliding it slightly under the edge of that circle. And then this one, uh, I happen to have the dimensionals, so I'm going to just use a little dimensional to give it a little bit of lift so it'll kind of be popped up and have some dimension on the card. Peel those backs off. Again, if you don't have extra dimensionals at home, you can just lay it flat. It won't matter. It'll still look really cool. And then I'm just going to bring that one right on top of my acetate circle a little bit like so. Now I'm going to take whatever my ribbon is and I've created it into a little bow. Trim that however. I'm going to adhere that with a glue dot. Again, you can use whatever adhesive you have. Multi-purpose white liquid glue works as well. And you're going to put that wherever you want it. It could be cute there. It could be down there. It could go over here. I, I'm thinking I'm going to put it over here to kind of balance. Maybe not. I don't want it too symmetrical. That's kind of the thing with these art mixed media things. You don't want it too too symmetrical, but you do want to create a kind of a triangle effect where your eye moves around. I do actually think after all that, I'm going to come and each, every time I create a type of project like this, each one ends up being different. So even if I videoed this again and did it again, it would probably come out slightly different. I'm just going to go ahead and do mine there. Okay. So that's the first part. Now you're going to fold that up. So if you'll notice that back panel is going to flip up. Okay. So it's on the opposite side of this one. So make sure before you attach anything, you have it to where when you have this sitting, it's like a tent card and can sit up because that's the goal right now. It can't, but we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to show you the trick to that. So now with your stamp and your black ink, you're going to stamp your sentiment. And if you didn't like the sentiment you got, if you have one that you've previously gotten from one of the kids or you have something else at home, you can use it. So you're just stamping that on that storybook label. And we're going to use two of the little gold pearls. Make sure you pick them up with your glue. And we're just going to center them into those little spaces. Like so. Now, this is where um, you are going to, in fact, you're probably going to need to do this. I'm probably going to just add them into the kit. And then you'll put on these dimensionals, like so. And you're going to have probably four. And the thing is, at the top, I want there to be two of these dimensionals and then one on either side. Don't really care about the bottom at the at right now. So then you'll peel off those adhesive backs. And you're going to put your fold up here and see my card is about halfway wherever I want it. I'm going to center that 
on to that card and stick it down. The reason you need those dimensionals is now your card will stand as an easel right there. Super cute, huh? And it's very different and beautiful. So it's like a piece of artwork that you can give. Now, if you want, you can fold that in and fold this in and you can stick it into an envelope. I, um, and send it to someone. I did not include an envelope because this is more of a, of a decor piece for this project, but you can stick it into an envelope that you have. So that is project one. All right, we're going to set that one aside. Now for the next one, we have these pieces out. And I will warn you ahead of time, when you get ready to do your gilded leafing, make sure that you have something on your uh, table and that you've tried to get rid of any static. So let's start with step one as stamping, first of all. We're going to do a little different uh, step order because you want to do the gilded leafing almost, almost to be your last step. So I'm going to stick that on there. Actually, I'm going to do that differently because I want, I'm going to stamp my saying slightly off centered. I, I know I got a black smudge, but I'm going to cover that up because I'm, you're going to make a knot with your gold ribbon and we're going to put it onto there. Get that off of me. I had some stickiness. Okay. And set that aside. The next step is to fold your card in half. Card base, fold it in half. If you have a bone folder, make it nice and crisp. And then just with your regular white liquid glue or whatever, you will need white liquid glue for this project. Um, and I will give you a couple suggestions if you don't have that, but it is the ideal. And then you're just centering that onto that white cardstock base. Go ahead and make the knot with your ribbon. We're going to do the gold leafing as the very last thing because once you touch that gold leafing, mm -mm -mm, you are not getting it off of you completely. It's, it takes a little bit of time. So I, especially for the video, I don't want to, I want to do that very last. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and glue that on. Woo. Just lost my bow. I've got a glue dot here. I think I have one left on here. Yep. A couple. Put that right there, like so. Again, if you had uh, dimensionals, you could pop this up. I'll go ahead and show you just so you can kind of see what it... What it looks like if you happen to have these. These are very inexpensive, so there's something that... If you want a package of them, they're like $4 and you get several hundred on a, in a package. So very inexpensive if you do a lot of these uh, kits with me or any crafting on your own. And you can set your, depending on the design of your paper, again, remember they'll all be different. Um, you can set your saying and sentiment wherever you like. And then you should have one or two pearls left. And you can use those however you want. I'm going to go ahead and drop mine onto this sentiment with my bow. So that two pearls plus a bow equals kind of three of a three of a thing. So it keeps my eye moving. Okay. Now, with you are going to have a tiny pinch. So my gold leafing, just to give you an idea, it's one container is ten dollars. And I've used this for several projects already, plus pinched your guys's out of it. But you see, it's just loose, literally loose. So you have a tiny little Ziploc bag of gold leafing. I'm going to sit mine there for a moment. Um, 
And how I'm going to tell you to do it is different. Normally I will put my adhesive and I put the card in the box and I use the sponge to remove the excess gilded leafing. However, you're just gonna have a pinch and a little Ziploc. So go ahead and just randomly and start with less because you can always go back and add more if you think that you need more. But you just wanna randomly, wherever you think that you want the uh, gold leafing to go, and that is gonna look different based on everyone's flowers and their, des their designer paper, whatever that looks like. And you're just gonna mash it onto that liquid glue with your finger. If you happen to have a crafting sponge, those are wonderful to use. They kind of help get it on there and get it off without your fingers being too sticky. I think I missed some somewhere. And as you go, if you see that you want a little bit more somewhere, just add it on and keep shifting that gilded leafing over to each little place of glue. Now, if you don't have white liquid glue, if you have another glue that's clear or whatever, you can use that. If you have something like double-sided tape or um, a snail, a tape runner, you can try to put little tiny pieces of it on there. However, I'm gonna tell you, it will look like whatever shape you put out. So my suggestion, if you have a tape runner or a, I'm gonna bring my bucket over here just so I can kind of shake it off and use my, actually I think on this time I'm gonna use my metal ruler. This is the other, this is the other thing I use is take a ruler and go down it. Um, but if you have like something like double-sided tape or a seal, a tape runner, um, something like that, my suggestion and idea for you to use your gold leafing would be to decide to make an edge on one, start with one, because you may not have enough gold leafing to do the whole thing. Just run your tape, let me move this, run your tape right along that edge and then put your gold leafing on top of it. Anyway, that is the card with the true 24 karat gold leafing. You could add it along the scallop if you wanted, but it just adds a little bit of sparkle and pop to that. So very, very pretty card when you get finished with that. It's just beautiful. So those are your two projects for this month. I hope that you enjoyed them. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is right here. My phone is there texting. You can always find me on Facebook at Sizzlin' Stamper, Shannon Miller. Um, you can instant message me under Shannon Miller as well. I'm here in Southern Colorado. So um, I hope you enjoy these mixed media, artistry worthy cards and decor because everyone is an artist. And just by completing these two projects, you've proven that you are as well. Bye-bye guys.